Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Marks and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to add Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and a little bit of RGB to your desktop PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a little bit of Wi Fi 6E, some Bluetooth, and also some RGB into your desktop computer. Now, this has actually been sent over to us by Ugly Bob. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. This is the Fenvi AXE 3000. This is a PCI Express based Bluetooth and Wi Fi card with a little bit of RGB thrown in for good measure. This is using the AX210 chipset, and in theory, could provide you speeds of gigabit plus for your Wi-Fi. Now, obviously there is gonna be some caveats to this. You do need to have a router which will actually provide those speeds. So don't think to yourself, just by increasing your Wi-Fi card on your PC, either USB or one of these, that you're gonna magically get better Wi-Fi speeds. That isn't necessarily true. Your router does have to support the standards or at least come close. And obviously other things do come into consideration. You do still need to be relatively close to your router to achieve the maximum throughput. But in most cases, this will be a considerable upgrade over those cheaper USB models or even the ones which come built into motherboards these days. Another great point of this is the antenna as well. So this has an extension antenna. So you can either choose to screw the antenna straight into the back of the PCI card, or you can actually attach these and have this mounted somewhere further away. So this is about a one meter cable. So you can actually get the antennas a little bit further away from your PC if it is just a metal box and is blocking your signals. So taking a look first of all at the box, you can see what it's all about. And it tells you about the Wi-Fi 6E, six gigahertz spectrum, etc. And all around the box, it tells you about the specifications. If you look on the back for the technical side of things, it tells you what it supports in terms of operating systems. Generally, this is gonna be fine with Windows 10 or Windows 11, but don't worry, it does come with some handy accessories to get you installed and up and running. And talking of which, let's take a look at the unboxing, see what we actually get. So obviously, first of all, you get the card itself, which is actually a pretty nice looking card solid construction metal front plates there and we've got this really big heat sink here to keep the onboard chipsets nice and cool you have a full size back plate no half size one included in this unfortunately so if you are using a small form factor or half height system then sadly this is not going to be suitable for you you will have to source a replacement back plate on the back there you've got the two sma connectors for your antenna or the extension so nice and easy to do and there's some activity leds as well pci express times one slot there. So this is gonna work with pretty much most motherboards over the last 10 to 15 years. On the back, we've got some ventilation and also there is a connection there that is for the USB 2.0 port, which if you do wanna use the Bluetooth on this, you will have to connect that to a spare USB 2 header on your motherboard, which we'll show you later in the video. Something which is a little bit unusual on these types of cards is the fact we do have a splash of RGB. Now that may or may not be your bag. If it isn't something you're interested in, then a little bit of black tape over there will blank out quite nicely. But when this is plugged in, in theory, it does illuminate in RGB. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later on as well. Hopefully there's some B-roll so you can see what that looks like already. On the back of the card, it goes through again some of the specs. So you've got Fenv, you've got the model name there, which again, we'll put in the video description if you want to pick one of these up. This actually comes from AliExpress, so courtesy of Ugly Bob, as we said. So I will put links to that if you want to. Although obviously with uh, AliExpress, you do kind of take your life in your own hands. So certainly if you are buying from them, I would certainly suggest using PayPal if at all possible. AliExpress in general are quite good for doing refunds if something should go wrong, but if you want that added extra protection, then try and use PayPal or some other method to pay for your goods. So that's the card out of the way. Next up, there is a installation disk. So if you're having problems, say for instance, your Windows install is a brand new fresh one and don't have access to the internet, then there is a driver disk there, although obviously you will need a CD-ROM in order to use that. There's also a manual as well which tells you how to install it but don't worry about that because we're going to go through all that in the video anyway there's a usb cable so this plugs in so if you're using the bluetooth module or you want to make use of bluetooth then you can plug this into one end plug the other end into your motherboard again we'll show you how that goes a little bit later on and last of all we've got the actual extension antenna so two sma connectors on there the cable on here is just slightly over one meter in length so you run about three foot to uh, those of you in the states etc and you've got this section here, rubber pads on the bottom, so it's not gonna move around too much on your desk. And obviously you've got the antennas which you can move around to tune the signal for best performance. Or like I said, you can just unscrew these and connect these straight to the back of the card itself. So that's the intro right away. Let's get this thing installed and uh, see how well it performs. 
Okay, so to start with, to install the card, you're gonna to want to find a spare PCI Express slot. So in this particular motherboard, we've got a very handy one here at the very bottom. You can, if you want to, use a larger slot, like a 4X or 8X or 16X slot, like we've got here, which hopefully you can just about make out. But in this instance, we're gonna use the very bottom one. Now, something to bear in mind, because we're gonna actually have to plug into our USB headers, which are down here at this bottom section, it's probably a good idea to actually connect that cable up first and do the routing for that because otherwise, once you've got the card installed in this slot, you may find it a little bit cramped. So let's go ahead now. We'll get a screwdriver and we're gonna remove this screw here and remove this lower back plate to install the card. So grab a posi head screwdriver or cross head and use this screw at the bottom, loosen it off. And then we can remove this blanking plate. Make sure it just lines up with your PCI Express slot. Next, we're gonna attach the USB cable. Now do notice this section here is keyed. There's a little indentation there towards the top, which hopefully I'll try and zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And if you look at the cable itself, you notice there's some indentations on there which line up. So let's go ahead and plug that in. When it's plugged in, you should hear a definite click and it should fit in quite snugly, as you can see here. Next up, we're gonna actually connect the other end of the cable, which is this uh, USB header, and we're gonna plug it into one of these USB ports on the bottom. These, again, are keyed. There's a little pin which is missing, so just make sure you get it around the right way. When it's installed in the right place, it should look a little something like this. Just make sure all the pins are lined up, and then we can install the card into the PCI Express slot. So to install the card, all you want to do is to line up the actual card itself with the slot and also the back plate. And once it's pretty much in the right place, you can just push it in and it should fit in quite snugly. When the card is in place, just get your screw and tighten that back up. And again, it should look something a little bit like this. Okay, so it is many hours later. I've done some testing after installing this Wi-Fi 6 e card in the machine. And I'll be honest with you, I am slightly underwhelmed, but having said that, that is down to our network rather than the actual card itself. Potentially it can reach very high speeds, but in this particular instance, it hasn't because of our network has let it down somewhat, although I have tweaked around and tried to improve things. So let's take a look at some of the results. So we're looking at somewhere around this sort of 200, 250 megabits per second in terms of the download and for the upload we're capped here at 100 megabits so we're getting somewhere in region about 80 to 90 sometimes 100 so yeah it's been a very very mixed bag and essentially it's because of where i've been testing this room is cursed when it comes to wi-fi mostly probably down to things like there's light bulbs leds all that kind of stuff other wi-fi equipment and this is the center of the house so we've got a range extender at the back one at the front one in the middle and it kind of in the middle here is this weird zone where in theory, it should be absolutely perfect, but I think the devices kind of fight and swap channels all the time, so that's why we get very odd results sometimes when testing. But anyway, I digress. So this card overall, RGB, do I like it? Not entirely convinced that it's absolutely necessary. You're probably seeing some close-ups of it, and actually you can just about see it. Just, uh, where are we? There. In the background, you can just about see it. If you look up, there is the card in the PC just uh, lighting up. And actually, with the PC as it is, with the lighting, You've got a little bit of RGB going on elsewhere as well, so it kind of ties in a little bit. If you want to change the RGB, sadly, that is not possible. So you're basically stuck with how it looks. So like I said earlier, if you don't like it, stick a bit of tape over it and you'll be absolutely fine. In terms of speeds, obviously, I haven't been able to test this at its full capacity, which is a real shame because I would love to be able to do that. And actually something I did do uh, just to kind of clarify it and kind of make it all work in my own head. I actually installed a card which I bought a long time ago, another Wi-Fi 6E card which we reviewed, which I'll try and link as well, which was about double the price, and that got essentially exactly the same results. So yeah, kind of, it is doing as is expected, at least it is in our surroundings. Anyway, there you go. So if you want to add RGB, Bluetooth, and also Wi-Fi 6E to your PC, this is gonna be worth taking a look at. It is pretty cheap at the moment, around about 20 pounds. It's about half the price of some of the uh, kind of lesser known brands actually on Amazon. So 
definitely do check those out. Although if you do want the security of purchasing from Amazon, we'll put some Amazon affiliated links in the video description as well so you can check those out should you want to. I think that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks again to Ugly Bob for sending this over for a review. Much appreciated. For those of you that want to see this kind of content on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And that appears to be an airplane going over. Thanks for watching.